Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Jim Eagle coming to you from San Francisco. I know we're coming at a little later time than we normally come. Usually it's about 6 p.m. your time, about 4 o'clock my time, but this time we're a little two hours later, and that's good. Everybody should be home and uh, rested and have eaten already, so I'm hoping you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's with Cheryl Owen tonight, who is running for uh, the enemy swim district, uh, council, who's currently our council person, and she's uh, running again. So, uh, Cheryl, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Good, good. Uh, yeah, you just, you're kind of busy. The primaries are tomorrow. Are you a little busy? Oh, yeah. I've been busy trying to get ready and get myself ready for things like this, my speeches, my talking to everybody. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So, uh, as you know, how it runs is we have a set of questions that we already have printed up, and I, I don't know if you had a chance to review them or not, but if you didn't, we'll just get you through it. Uh, <laughs> and we also, uh, but prior to the questions, we ask you to say a little bit about yourself, uh, maybe some of your background, a little bit about your family, whatever you feel you're comfortable sharing with us. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. My name is Cheryl Owen. Uh, I was born and raised here in Enemy Swim. Uh, I come from the Shaker and Hayes family, uh, Shepherd family, and in Long Hollow, the Williams family. My father was Philip Williams. My mother is Loretta Bisnett. Uh, she's married from Pine Ridge area, into Pine Ridge area. Uh, like I said, I was born and raised here, so I know a lot of people from here. Um, I have a lot of relatives within Tokonoa. And all through growing up, I could say that we weren't like a wealthy family. You know, I'm old school. So I was raised by my grandparents. And during that time, you know, we lived off the land, a lot of off the land, outhouse, running water, no running water. So I know what it's like and what it feels to be um, without, I could say. Growing up, um, we didn't have much, but it didn't feel like we didn't have much because that was just a way of life for us. And working hard with the grandparents and I have a lot of elders and one thing before I wanted to do this is that I wanted to apologize to my elders that are older than me, because we mm. still have a lot, I still have a lot of grandparents that are out there that are probably listening. And I don't want to disrespect, you know, anybody in any, um, I'm really a believer in being respectful to our elders. I'm an elder myself, but I'm a, a younger elder, I would say, <laughs> but um, I just wanted to to make sure that they knew that whatever I say, you know, it's um, to forgive me if I'm and be disrespectful in any way because I don't want to be that way. And I had a lot of mentors. I had a lot of mentors growing up, mostly elders. Um, I didn't get into my political field till I was like maybe in my 30s. Uh, I started going to district meetings, um, and there was a lot of them in our district that I really admire, you know, like the strength, like they showed. Um, Dorothy Gill was one of them, Vivian, and I, and Ellen Fisher was another one, and I, I learned a lot off them, and my grandmother always used to say that a good person would in a, in a leadership position would listen. You have to be a good listener. And if you listen, you'll hear what the people are, are saying. So I didn't just jump into this. Um, my whole heart was um, our future generation, working for our future generation. And I've watched and I've seen a lot of things and I've been on a lot of boards and committees. I've been on G um, Constitution Revision. I've been on the Enemy Swim School Board for about 12 years. I've also been on council in 2008. So I got some experience there. And I was vice chair of our district. So it was all a learning process for me. And I'm, I had 26 years in gaming uh, I was the GM twice of Dakota Magic. 
I started my gaming career at um, Dakota Sioux and I moved to Magic. I transformed there to Magic. And I worked my way up because I believe in working your way up, you know, working your way up from the bottom on the, all the way to the top. So I've worked in as a line employee, a second, and then I moved to a manager position, then associate manager, part-time hotel manager, um, then the GM. So I've been uh, through a lot of growing pains, you would say, and I believe that a person that's been through things and hardship maybe, they have a right to speak about it then not something that you don't know. So it's experience, a lot of experience. Well, that sounds wonderful. How did you get into the politics part of it? Uh, because I cared. I wanted to know what was going on. So I attended district meetings at a young age. Brilliant. I didn't speak much. I wanted to learn and see what it was all about. And I could tell you now through all my experience, it's not really what people think it is, even sitting on council. Mm -hmm. It's different once you're on that side because you have to be a team. You can't be divided. Mm -hmm. You have to be a team. You have to have um, other councils because me as one person, I can't change unless others have the same dream, same vision. And that's what would unify us is if we have that same dream, same vision. Yeah, and you have to learn to think outside the box also. So. And, what um, was your first position, uh, elected position? Pardon? What was your first elected position? My first elected position would probably, I was elected on the school board for 12 years, but within the oh. district, it was uh, vice chair, and plus I was um, on constitution revision also. Okay. Well, so yeah, a lot of uh, detail work for you, huh? A lot of uh, yeah. from the ground up kind of stuff, huh? Yep. Yeah, it's yep. a good way to go. Good way to start. Yep. And my family here is it broadens. You know, I'm I'm married into the Owen family. Um, uh, I love, I just have to say my, my mother-in-law, Lillian Owen, uh, she, I just love her so dearly. And I take a lot of advice from our elders, you know, like I, I'll call them up and I believe that they have a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge that they can share. All right. Very good. All right. Thanks for sharing with us. And, and, and thanks again for joining us tonight and, uh, and letting us share in, 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 in this journey for you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and start the questions and uh, with uh, number one, and that has to do with transparency. So here it goes. What does transparency in tribal government mean to you? How will you work towards transparency in tribal government if you are elected? Transparency to me is letting the people know um, what you're working on, what you're, um, what's going on within council. Uh, when I do my reports and with COVID issue going on now, um, we didn't have a district meeting this month. So I tried this last month to try to get everything I could in into our meeting and so that the people were aware of what was going on. So giving them as much information as possible to our district membership. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any way, and we're kind of fortunate in that you're, you're already elected into the position right now and, and you're going into maybe a second term. Um, in the first term, um, is there any way that you can perhaps make transparency uh, easier or, or better? Chant, chant, um in my first term or, or not in this no, just, uh, you know going into your side now that you're going into possibly your second term what what uh, how would you make transparency even easier for for people i would say um host district meetings or even have special district right. meetings because i'm more about um letting our people know within my district what's going mm -hmm. on and we can also do like video what we're doing right now if right. here, you know, we can actually find ways to 
to get the knowledge or get um, what we're doing and the information out to the people. Nice, nice. Nice. How about any social media? Do you use any social media? Uh, we do. We've been doing Zoom meetings. Like when our the tribals shut down, we do right. Zoom meetings, and we have a group chat that we always talk. And right okay. now, like within our district, that's what we'll be doing also. So. Okay. Very good. All right. Second question. Uh, what do you think about council members who vote against their district's motions? You should always, to your best ability, go with what your district would like, what their district wishes. But sometimes, um, if you vote against it, you have to explain to the best of your knowledge and explain to the district membership why you did it. And that's what I, and there's been a couple of occasions that I had to do that. Oh, okay. And I have to explain to them, you know, why I, yeah. I did it that way. Yeah. That must be difficult. Pardon? That must be difficult. Oh, yeah, it is. It is difficult because um, we have like maybe 20 to 30 maybe uh, members that attend the district meetings. So it can go one way or the other. Mm. It always changes, so... Okay. It's like, um, I'll give you an example. I, because our, our district was split on off reservation, you know, and, and it was, I believe it was six to eight. Right. And, but I voted for it because I believe in fairness. We're all people that are from this tribe and mm -hmm. I really believe in fairness to everybody. It might hurt me, but I got to be a truthful and I got to be honest. So uh, in working in gaming, uh, that's part of it, being, being fair with everybody. So. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Thanks for the vote of support. Um, a third question. Do you know what racism means? Uh, I don't just mean from other races, but towards our own enrolled members. Why are off-reservation members such a threat? How do you plan on address addressing racism within our tribe? And I always like to say, uh, preface that, is that I, until I actually read that question, I never realized it was an issue on the tribe. It never occurred to me that it would be an issue uh, on the reservation like that but uh, i guess i guess now that i've thought about it and i've heard different people's views on it i can see why it, it kind of some of the um more white passing members feel sometimes excluded whereas some of the uh, um, uh you know the elected members they kind of feel um uh, perhaps left out in other ways mm -hmm. yeah um how do we, we deal with that I wish we lived in a perfect world, you know, right. but we, where there's not. Um, myself, I grew up with it, even within our own tribe. I uh, dealt with it. I dealt with it when I was a GM at Magic because mm. there's things that I've heard and that was brought because we're tightly knitted. You know, everybody will let you know what's going on, and they want. They felt like. At that time, at that administration, they felt like a, a male would be better in a position in these leadership positions. Mm. But um, so I, I've been through it myself, you know, and and it you have to be in order. You just have to keep being um, persistent, you know, and moving forward. You can't let any of that bother you and because it's there. It's there, um, we have to learn to deal with it. I wished it wasn't, you know, but it is. And I've heard both pros and cons on off-reservation, like you have, you know, both, um, how some feel like uh, they should get the same treatment as on-reservation do. Um, I've heard, well, we, we're in the trenches here and we're the ones battling the battle here uh, but again, we're all tribal members, you know, we're all tribal members from the same tribe. And 
we just have to learn to try to be fair to one another and everyone. If you can find that happy medium, then we need to look for it. So um, I've uh, heard from um, other people, they have sometimes go back and refer to education as a way to get over um, that, that racism uh, that we have to each other at times. So yeah. um, is that, uh, how do you feel about uh, education and, and battling that kind of thing? Uh, for me, being on a school board, I'm for education yeah. and I'm for that anybody could learn. Mm -hmm. If you had a lot of experience learning through anything in your life, you know, to me, we battle every day, no matter what. You know, we go through our, from our past to our present. Um, to me, it's, it's what you've been through. You know, what you've been through gains a lot of experience. And I'm for it, and I believe anybody could learn. Uh, if you're lacking typing skills, uh, don't don't um, say anything bad about that person because they can learn. We all have that capability to learn as much as we want to learn. It's all up to the individual. All right, thank you for that. Uh, let's go on to the next question. Uh, would you be willing to accept a stipend for your time instead of a salary? Why or why not? Okay, um, it would probably depend on the stipend uh, and what the people <laughs> want, you know, uh, because in reality today, it takes two people in a household to run a family. Mm. You know, like I have um, 26 grandchildren and one great. Wow. <laughs> and I'm also taking care of six of my grandchildren, you know, and so to me, it's, it would probably really be up to uh, the membership, but they have to be realistic about it. Because mm -hmm. I have some history behind that. Um, at one time, council was getting a stipend, but they were um, working in other jobs within our tribe. And some of the tribal membership would feel that um, they were um, intimidated, you could say, by our council people that were working. So that's how this evolved in salary, a salary uh -huh. transition, because you're not able to work and be on council. You're on council for 20, so 4 7. Your phone is constantly ringing off the hook. Um, you serve the people. And so at this time, I would, if, if depending on the stipend and if depending on my heart and where I'm at, you know, like with serving, serving and how my ability, like if I want to, if this is really my goal in helping the people, then you help the people. But, um, Council took a cut in salary when this went, that was the first thing that we did when we came on was we took a cut already. And it is an easy position. Um, you're always getting, there's, it's, you get encouragement and you have people that actually come against you. So you have to be able to put up with a lot of things, a lot of issues also. Mm. So it's, at this point, you know, it would be up to the people if they wanted to do that, but they would have to find some way for us that we would work also, because we still have families to provide for. Right. All right. Very good. All right. Next question. Uh, do you support cultural preservation and specifically our Dakota language, history, artifacts, and arts? Yes, I do. Very much so. Um, we as tribal members need to know where we came from. We need to know where our past is to our present. And I have ran into several um, people that I know that are tribal members that were either adopted off the reservation and they're trying to find their roots. You know, they're trying to find their <laughs> They're trying to find their roots, so they need to know like where they came from. Right. So yes, I really support 
our culture and I'm a product of, uh, you would say, the boarding school days. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandparents, my, even my mother speaks fluently oh. in our language. And I feel bad because I don't. You know, I know, you know some words and I could understand some. Right, and, right. But like my son, I pushed it because he's, our, he's uh, teaching our cultural language you know, at the school. So it's very important to me that we know our language. My grandkids are learning. Mm -hmm. I put them in the full immersion, one of my grand, my youngest oh. one. And I believe he learned, he, had, he knows more about our language than I do. And he's <laughs> Good. Good, that's how <laughs> to do yeah, it. Yeah. Been at. yeah. Having uh, visited the, the uh, reservation a couple of times myself um, uh, to, to see family members and stuff, um, I was kind of surprised there's no real museum or, or um, center where artifacts or art are shown. I mean, I've seen a little bit within the magic because they'll, they'll put art up on the walls and stuff, and it's, it's really wonderful and beautiful to see it. But how come there's not a center? And, and I'm, I'm one that believes that we need one. Yeah. We need uh, a place that we can uh, store our artifacts because uh, we need to show where we came from, our history. And I sit on the Thipo board. The so which one? I'm a liaison for the Thipo oh. board because okay. that's my passion. And when I go into the Thipo office, there's such a peace there because you're surrounded by all these artifacts, our history, and it gives you a sense of peace. You know, you just feel really good just learning about it, yeah. learning things that you didn't know, you know. And so, yes, I'm, I'm for that. And I'm, uh, I, I'm working and looking and we're finding ways that we can get, get a museum for our, our, our artifacts that we have now. And it would be good, um, even like at our at the, uh, Dakota Connection. I know there was a plan in place at one time, but it was finding the money, you know, to get to that goal. Every time we have a goal, we have to have some kind of support, uh, grants, you know, things of that nature so we can move forward. And uh, there's a lot of people that have great ideas out there, good visionaries but it's finding the funding next. And I know that um, Thipo is really working hard on saving money to get this up and running. And they're working hard at it. So I'm really thankful for that, that department and what they do. Okay, great. Let's keep supporting that department. Yes. <laughs> okay, next question. What do you think of allowing voting by mail, uh, by uh, in ballot for tribal members? I believe in doing it. Um, I believe in where there's a way. But I believe um, our off reservation voters, uh, they need to also be um, informed of what's going on. Right. so that they can vote the right way. Um, I believe that in time with technology that we have, it can be possible. So I, I hope everybody comes back and votes <laughs> so we can change <laughs> things. Right, right. And that will have to go through like our constitution revision also um, for all this to happen. And we do have it right now, like people change the constitution, our constitution revision board, which I sat on before, bring those things to the district, you know, and, and changes. And like I said, there's very few that attend district meetings so too. So to get a lot of these passed. Right. So I believe in it. I, I believe that everybody should have a right to vote. I think in, in having asked that question several times to several people, one of the things that came up was that um, uh, in order to change the constitution, we, we needed a quorum and that the, uh, the government or the administration was never really able to establish a quorum uh, because there are so many off people. 
And I think that if you had the mail-in ballot, we would be able to very easily establish a quorum to get those things. Is that a chicken and egg thing? Do we have to get the, do we have to change the constitution to allow the mail-in ballot to, in order to get a quorum? I wouldn't think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's judicial that usually presents it. Yeah. And I believe it's 30%, you know, we need to get that. So it's like something that the council would vote on. Yeah. And they would say yes. And then once it's done, then we had a quorum to be able to change the constitution. Right. Yeah. We can, uh, even the election ordinance, you know, those can be changed too. Okay. But it, like I said, it has to have, um, on council, it's very different. Uh, you have to have the same vision. You know, I'm just one council person. I carry three votes, but you have to have everyone else agreeing, you know, or get that majority of that vote passed. And that takes a lot of debating, sitting around the table and debating these things. Okay. All right. Well, then, again, that's a good answer to that question. I like that answer. Let's go on to the next one. Is it, uh, it is reported that our grocery store has been losing money uh, since it opened. The tribe has invested millions. What is your opinion on Dakota Crossings? If we were to close it, what could we use the building for? You know, how else, uh, what, what, what resources would best serve those from, from the grocery store? Well, see, like um, our district from Enemy Swim was against the grocery store when, a bit, well, uh -oh. when it was first brought up. Because we, me coming from gaming, and um, I'm more of a money maker, you know, so more business minded that way. Um, our district was against it, but it's here. You know, the grocery store is here. And uh, this is what I hear a lot of people um, saying is they feel comfortable, they're proud, you know, that it's our grocery store. And if the people want just to be proud of our grocery store, then they have to realize that there might not be any money. And then we just leave it open because we're proud that it's a grocery store. If we feel comfortable going in it and having uh, creating jobs for our people, uh, then it would be up to the people if that's, and then they'll have to understand then that we're in a big competition. But again, that's our, I'm doing my best as a council rep because it's here already and it's our store to find ways to see if we can make money on it. Bringing different people in, um, you know, different ways. And, and that's what I told the people at our district meeting is that's my job now. You know, if we're gonna keep it, we need to look at different ways so that it could make money and it could be prosperous for us. Right, right. So, um, but it, does it run at a loss? Yes, it does. It does. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, is that sustainable? Uh, we're doing our best to try to get it where it needs to be. Um, and that's going to take some time uh, to get it. If we could do it, like uh, Teal's is there. We got a big competition. We got our dollar store, our dollar generals, you know, all those right. that are around us. And so there is some big competition there for our store. Right. Um, but I know I will do my best to try to get it where it needs to be. And I will be honest with the district membership if we can't. And then it'll be up to them if they still, then they have to understand then it will just, it's just gonna be our store. And it okay. might not make the revenue that it needs right. to. And the second question that you were saying um, that you yeah, asked if it that, were to close, um, what where would we put the money instead? What what, what uh, resources would uh, would we invest in? Um, we need a lot of visionaries and when to come to the table and thinking outside the box. Like we've already talked about maybe our own funeral home, uh, mm -hmm. doing our hemp. 
Yeah, I've heard that one here. Yes, hemp, and there was even a suggestion on our own IV banks. But then oh. that that would be better for the bag factory because mm -hmm. you do IV bags because we I believe we have to send out of the country for those. There's not oh. one here. So that would be good for all our hospitals around us. So yeah. the you know, Absolutely. TV oil, we could do all kinds of things. You know, we just yeah. need to think and then find the resources to do it. There was a uh, one suggestion uh, of a, a jail uh, yeah. that I had heard. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. kind of interesting too. Part of it, and there was another um, one that was uh, that they wanted to turn it into what we have now, the connection. Oh, okay. That wouldn't be a very good location because it, our connection right now is right off the interstate. So yeah, not too far down the road, right? Yeah. Right, right now for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about renewables? Did you did, did any? How do you feel about that? Like wind farms, solar farms, that kind of things. Oh yes, I believe that we need to go in that direction. And just like what I was talking about, the funeral home, we have um, tribal members that are you know morticians and. We can there's where there's a will there's a way that we can do things. So yes, I'm I'm in favor of renewable energy. Right. Our bottle. Hey, Bergen, I'm sorry, what? Our like our aquifers. We oh okay. We can even bottle our own water. Okay. Okay. We have a lot of aquifers. Yeah. I've not heard that one yet. That sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. we have a lot of aquifers within our area and we could right. do our own water. Yeah, good point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and water is a great business. <laughs> All right. Next question: um, uh, What ideas do you have for economic development? I think I just mentioned some of them. Yeah, no, right. But if you had something else, maybe if you had some other idea for. Yeah, there's a lot of um, ideas out there. I'm like a person that um, we have to spend money to make money you know, and different uh, ideas like that. So, yeah, I'm all about making money for our tribe and finding ways to do it. And that comes vision, you know, that that's a vision and a dream and you need to make them come true. Yeah. And like right now with our COVID center, I'm really thankful at this time that during my term that there was something accomplished. You know, like we're having our our food pantry coming up, our daycare, that's going to be for our youth. Um, and that excites me right there. They're due for a new daycare and our COVID center to help take care of our people. So okay. those are all economic developments that we can find ways to look at. Right. And just remember, if we did a museum, by the way, or a cultural center, it would become a kind of a tourist thing too, right? Tourism, bringing yeah. tourism, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next question. Um, one of the biggest issues coming up in this fall's election will be our decline in revenues from our three casinos due to the pandemic crisis. In light of declining revenues, what programs or projects need to be reduced and or replaced? And how will you make a significant difference running against you? Okay. A lot of these um, programs are run by our executives. So first of all, it's our executives that need to reevaluate what needs to be done. Uh, and then they bring their suggestions to council and then we vote on it. So, cause one council person can't do it. If I was in administration, I would know what I would do because um, in magic, at magic, when I was GM there, I'm the first $26 million GM. And that took a lot of work to do that. And so I know about uh, reevaluating different um, programs are, and everybody's needed and everybody wants a job, but those are some of the tough questions that are gonna have to be brought to the table and doing our budget. And really that's basically for the executives, you know, to do that because they run almost all our programs. So what we, if we have 
executive team that are evaluating different situations, then they bring it to council and then we vote on it okay. off their advice. I see. Is there a inherent um, uh, bias though from an executive who may not want to cut his program? Yes, there is. <laughs> We've been asking this question for a while now as council, what they're going to do. Because we have to be ready and we have to be prepared. So they need to come back with budgets and what they're going to do. And, and it's election year and a lot of them are not going to want to do that because they're afraid uh -huh. of getting votes. So it, it's pressure, but you have to make the right decision. And sometimes it's not going to be popular, but it, a good leader will still do that. A good leader will take the hit sometimes, you know, because we're, we can be divided. We can be divided and we need to find that common ground and balance things out because um, there's a lot of grants out there, but uh, that, that are, um, providing a salary, say for somebody, but they need to be honest with that person and say, when this grant goes out, runs out, that your position is gonna be ended. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't wanna do that. You know, a lot of people don't want to, these people have homes, you know, they have children, you know, so it's a tough decision, you know, and that's something though that needs to be made. And a lot of times council, uh, we get blamed for a lot of things because it's our vote, but it's off the recommendation of our executive because they run majority of the tribe. Does the council sometimes have to go back to the executive and say, you need to rethink this <laughs> or, or do you? <laughs> okay, good. We have to go back and we have to keep asking because they're elected in by large we're elected in by our own districts. Mm -hmm. So they need to come back. Sometimes we'll have to, you know, put our foot down and say, you need to bring this back. But right. they'll say, they'll come back at us and say, well, this is administrative. Mm. You know, it's not legislative. So, so there's always a kind of battle back and forth in that area. Mm. I see. I see. Well, that's very interesting. I didn't, um, it kind of adds another piece of the puzzle in my head about how things kind of run there. You know, I'm not living there. I don't always know everything, but you know, it's, it's kind of interesting that, that it's that kind of a structure. Yeah. Our executives, they run majority of the tribe. Mm, okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Next question. Um, do you have any issues that you would like to work on as a tribal council person that maybe you didn't do in the first term? Is there something you want to do in the second? Yes. I would like to, um, before we go into session, the things I would like best is to have our information beforehand and we should debate on it in a round table before we actually get into council. I don't like surprises because then it kind of puts you on a spot to yeah. go through all the information that you need to make a decision. Um, yeah. I, I like the round table so we know exactly what we're voting on when we get into council. That's one of the areas where I would like to see happen more. Debating before we get into no surprises, no surprises. <laughs> because then, then you're put on a spot because there was a time where I was going to say no. My vote was going to be no because you didn't get this information to me in a timely manner. Mm. See, I don't like those surprise votes and because that means somebody else is talking out there and you're getting surprised with it. So right, it's right. best to table it, go into a round table and it's debating really and if it's a good idea or not. And then right. we can come together with a, a better solid vote right. on the yeah. So how it, it works, how it works is actually what you'd like to work on is the uh, the process. Yeah. Yeah. The process and how we do things. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Uh, All right. Like um, uh, 
Okay. Um, I feel that council, there should be some kind of um, introductory. I remember when I first got on council, they swore me in and they just said, here. And we were right in the middle of council. So there should be some kind of introduction plan, um, where HR is, you know, and how, how to do things. So that way you feel more comfortable going into it. There's a transition that needs to take place in that area. Okay. Next question. How do you view the purpose and function of tribal council? Is it a legislative or administrative body? Explain. It's legislative. Right, right, it's right. It's legislative and um, we should be dealing more with the law and the codes. And we, this term, when I was, uh, what we did was we set a goal out on every Friday that we were going to work on our codes and bring everybody to the table, even um, our district boards and committees, what powers they have as commissioners and a board, um, and bringing um, judicial in and actually looking at our codes because our codes are so old. So we dedicated Friday to do this all day, but um, only a few of us would attend. Uh -huh. So I would like to really work on that issue too, you know, that we need to get these codes up to par and that's going to be some time. Tell us why, why is that so important that they be up to par? What is it that, um, because some of our codes are so outdated that, um, that, that they're just not applicable anymore or they're not, uh, no, they they don't function? Be, uh, I would say, Like with our laws, our, um, our codes need to be uh, updated, really, more uh, understandable, more readable. Oh, okay, okay. Because uh, over time, it's changed. Things have changed, so we need to get them up to today, you know, the, today's time. Right, right, okay. Yeah. I, um, and especially with, uh, I guess, the language as well, huh? And, yes. and technology. So, yeah. yeah, including probably processes and methods that have changed from say the seventies or eighties. We don't really do some things that we used to back then and we do it differently now. I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. All right. Next uh, question. Oh, but I did find that um, you guys do oversee the executive. So sometimes it's a little bit administrative. Would you, would you, right, a little bit? Because you're overseeing projects, even though from what you explained earlier, the executive does all the administration of the project, but you oversee him. So sometimes you can get a little bit uh, administrative between you two trying to uh, figure out an issue. Yeah. I would think, yeah, okay. Yeah, so we, we would, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes we'll have to put it, we try to, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt to get things done. Mm. Otherwise, then we, we, we would be able to put our foot down and we yeah. do oversee the executives also. Yeah. But is it, what is harder, doing the legislative part or overseeing executives? Which one is harder? I would say overseeing the, both really, but overseeing the executives because a lot of our issues and our calls and our concerns are more, more um, administrative. Hmm. If I get a call and said, like today I got one, oh. um, I'll make sure that because their voice is being heard. And I'm, I'm um, actually getting a hold of them and saying, this is a concern for my district member. And can you look into it? You know, and I'll follow up with the call that they're going to be looking into it or they will be. And if I find out they haven't, then I'll I'll find out, I'll, I'll push it basically and say, you need to look into this because it's a concern. Right, right. So I always usually follow up with our district members' wishes, you know. Yeah, very good, I, I like that. All right, next one. Um, have you read the duties and responsibilities of the council that is in the early legislative policy? 
And do you agree with what is written? Why or why not? Are you in favor of a written document that spells out the duties of the tribal council? I think you were talking about that earlier too, weren't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. We have our legislative policy, but the only thing that's in it is our salaries. And I would like, coming from gaming, we're highly regulated and I would like something written or added to that because you have to be accountable. You have to be accountable on your reports, um, you know, what you've been doing. Like I take pictures of my um, monthly meetings mm -hmm. all the time so that I, um, so I can let the membership know that what I'm doing, you know, like rather being, because right now I'm liaison of planning, I'm liaison of uh, TIPO and gaming, you know, all are for profits because um, there we don't have a CEO over all of our for profits. So it's important that um, we let our membership know what we're doing. We're busy, we're very busy. So we can document everything in our administrative policy because that's one of the things that we're looking at. You know, we need to add some things in there of our duties and what we're doing. Yeah. So it needs a little bit of work, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, next question. Are you in favor of the current way that tribal council and executives are suspended and removed from office? Uh, explain how would you make it a more fair, complete and factual process? By changing a constitution, you know, it, it lays it out mm -hmm. right in there and it, that needs to be changed because sometimes it could be minor, but if you're charged with just one of those infractions, then it creates a removal. There's no suspension or mm -hmm. anything like that. So yes, it's gonna have to take a constitutional change to change that. And that takes a quorum, right? Yes. So right. Yeah. And you, that, that means you need offer as voters. Yes. <laughs> yes. So allowing us to vote would be help. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, I like that uh, you, you, you kind of want a uh, suspension in there if, if there's something uh, uh, amiss or something, you know, an yeah. executive is not fulfilling some part of his duty and you, you, you do that. That's nice. And what about tribal councils? Is it, are they easily removed as well? Can they, what? The tribal councils uh, and executives. I, I know the executives, it sounds like they can be easily removed. What about tribal council? Is it also easy to remove them? Uh, they follow the same constitution and it's our dec dis district also, you know, oh. can do a removal process on your mm -hmm. council person too. So there's different ways that you can remove a council person. Okay, wow. All right. Is there a way to make that a more, a different, a more fair way? I believe so. Okay. I believe that um, it, it really gets political. And if, if you're fighting for somebody that really, you really want removed, it'll, it'll happen if you get the majority of the people to do it. Okay. So I think there should be a fair, more fair way of doing it. Okay. Next question, which I think is the last question here. Uh, regarding the tribal constitution, are you in favor of how it is written or do you think it should be amended to say what? So that's a kind of a big question because we've been talking about it pretty much the whole evening about changing the constitution, how it's done. And um, so clearly uh, you are in favor of having it amended and um, to say what, though, um, is up to you. Yeah, I think there's a lot think? of areas in there, you know, and we do have people, like I say, that put in uh, to the Constitution revision for changes. Um, and then it's up to the districts. We just had one. And sometimes the districts will just look at them and just approve them. And some of them, because they're, they're lengthy, they can be lengthy. Um, but yes, I believe that we need changes to be more clearly because it could be misinterpreted one way 
and some people can interpret it another way. Yeah. yeah. So, and with when any time there's a constitution issue coming up, you can look at it all kinds of different ways. Sometimes it'll just be one word that could change everything. Mm. So yeah, I think I really believe it needs to be clear in certain areas. Okay. Like I said, sometimes that's attorneys are good at that. <laughs> What's that? Sometimes attorneys are really good at uh, yeah. language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they'll go off of um, maybe uh, what they um, if it was an issue that came up before court, or they'll they'll clarify that for you too. So. All right, so that was the last question. Um, so we, usually we reserve the last part um, just for you to give a little campaign speech and um, let your constituents know, especially the off-res people and, and those who might come in, right, to uh, Enemy Swim. And uh, unfortunately, I can't. I'm, I'm Enemy Swim, but I, I, can't, I can't make the 2,000-mile journey this time. <laughs> but, um, but other people um, might be able to drive in easily and uh, let them know um, why they should vote for you. Well, I'm the, I'm the oldest one that's running. There's two others running. And I believe that I've gained a, a lot of knowledge through um, just my hardships, you know, and I've been, like I said, everybody knows me. They know my lifestyle. They know who I am. And they know I'll stand my ground when it needs, when I need to stand my ground. Uh, but majority of it is I look out for our next generation because those ones are going to be the ones that are going to be our leaders in the future. So that I just encourage everybody to go out and vote. Uh, and we need to be and go back to who we are as Dakota people. Uh, through this learning stage of um, my time here, there's a lot of um, angry people out there. Uh, we need to learn to have our compassion back for one another and, and be united. If you disagree in anything, then disagree to disagree. And then we move on. You know, you can't hold grudges. You shouldn't hold grudges. Because uh, it just reminds me of old school days. You know, like people hold grudges for a long time. And we need to go back to really who we are as pe a people. Right. And I might sound old school, but I was raised that way. So I've been through the trenches. And I can only talk about the things that I've been through. And I believe that I was groomed for this because of my heart and where it's at. You know, I've been through a lot and you, you go through growing pains that way and that's how you learn. Right. right. And Enemy Swim is one of the larger districts, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. So you represent quite a few people. Oh yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. And it, um, it's different, you know, nowadays from when I was growing up, but you have to learn to, to grow with the changes. Yeah. But hang on to those values. Hang on yeah. to those values that you have and that you were brought and taught. Yeah. yeah. And that comment about being people being angry, I, I've actually, um, I actually don't think it's just, um, just it, you know, within the, the reservation. I think that's probably nationwide, huh? Yes. Lately, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a one on one person. It was, I was excited to get on here and talk about things, but yet I'm a one-on-one -on -one person. I like to talk to people face-to-face, -face, you know, like, mm -hmm. and not on Facebook or anything. If you have anything, <laughs> call me, you know, yeah. we'll have coffee and, and talk to me in person. Right. Because it might not be at all, or it could, things could be misunderstood. And a lot of times that's what it is, misinformation or misunderstandings. Oh, I see. 
I see. Is that actually is that how you would characterize most of people's you know when they approach you when a constituent comes up and approaches you uh, with an issue that uh, he or she is having? Would you say it was a misunderstanding at some point? Um, a lot of times, um, it some of the times. Was it all economic? Some of the times they're upset for a reason, you know. So mm -hmm. you need to listen to them, listen to what, why they're upset. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to find a way to help them or resolve that issue because they're upset for a reason. So let's get them the answer that they need if you can, if it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Are a majority of the issues that people come to you, I'm just asking these questions because you're already a council person, so it's kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Are, are the majority of the issues that people come to you with, uh, can they be, um, is like 90% of it have to do with an, you know, um, uh, uh, economic stuff or is it 10%, you know, procedural or that you don't understand? What, what, what's the majority of the problems that people have? The majority part of it is really... Um, I get called when, say, our, because there's a process to everything, and mm. if our, um, mm. we don't call, like, if it's an executive issue, like, today I had a call that somebody was really upset about a dog issue. See, and, um, a dog issue, wow. Yeah, we had too many dogs in our housing, and it is, uh. it's a big issue here because they're not spaded or neutered and they're oh, yeah. running around and could bite children you know and things like that so yeah, um, true. so i called our district chairwoman so we could find ways to address this and then i could try to get it resolved on council issue let's find a way to resolve these issues because it costs money i found out it costs like fifty dollars just to put a dog to sleep oh. so those are those are real issues to people you know sure. because they don't want somebody bitten or the you know or they have been bitten so those are those are things that probably they're administrative really you know but they're not getting an answer so they some of them feel that if they come to council we can get it resolved faster right right because okay. we all have different job duties, you know, down to our district uh, chairperson, you know, everybody has job duties all the way up. So, but I believe they think that if they come to council with their issue, then we could push it faster. Like housing. I get a lot of housing issues, you know, they're, they're, mm. you know, different things like that. What's holding it up? You know that these people can't get in their houses, and and then I give them an answer. Okay. Yeah. Is answer. it supply? There's just just not enough houses. What's that? Is it supply? Just not enough houses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're just waiting for like turnover or something. Yes. Uh, okay. And maybe fixing the houses and different things. Mm. Right. Right. But How about during? Pandemic? Yeah, during the pandemic. I know that they had stopped the elderly cards for a while. Was it tough during that time where people were coming to you and, 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 and asking why you did that or why it happened? And... The elderly card? Yeah, during the pandemic, they had stopped it for a while. Was that difficult? Were a lot of people calling you? Yeah, there was, um, really, there wasn't enough money. Right, to right. Apply, uh, to, to give it out, but... You know what? I'm really thankful because uh, there was um, some elderly that thought like my grandma did. Um, she would be more for the youth than for herself. She would feed the kids first before right. herself. It's like she sacrificed, you know, for the younger ones. Right. You know, are the working ones a household really? She was the strong or the backbone of the family. So, but um, but they're back. And I'm thankful that they're back, you know, because there's people out there that really need it and really can use it that are hurting. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, gaming is doing well. Um, is it coming have, back to about 90% or? Coming back. Good. And it's going to take time and that's going to take patience, you know. Yeah. We have to endure sometimes our hardship, you know. And yeah. it, I'm glad it's bouncing back. Yeah.
Now, I have to admit that this week I did receive the COVID uh, monies from the tribe for help with rent. So that was nice. That was good. And it took about five weeks, which I don't think was too bad. I know, I know there was some impatience. If, if you look at some of the feed on um, our group, our Facebook group, they, there's a lot of complaints about um, it felt like you were, you were putting in an application into a black hole. You just didn't know if it, if it was going to happen or not. So the fact that it does, it almost seems miraculous because some people just don't hear anything. You know, they, they were talking about calling into the office and then they it would just ring and ring. Nobody would answer. But it does seem to work a little bit because I clearly, you know, I got mine. And, and that's like, um, we approved it, we brainstormed and we approved it, but then now it went into um, our vice chair's hands, seeing how they were going to get it out. And, and a lot of the people that were answering phones, you know, and trying to get this and um, all the faxes coming in, it becomes hectic for them too. I'm you know? sure, yeah. Meetings and... You know, overwhelming I'm right glad, i'm glad that people are getting help though you know that yeah. that's positive right right and it does help so yeah, yeah. so thank you thank you guys for doing that <laughs> okay all right so that concludes everything i want to thank you um for sharing your time i know that you're probably busy especially at this time cheryl you're probably busy doing a lot of election stuff but thanks for making time for our group and answering some of our questions Yes, you're welcome. It, it and I apologize for it being late, but like I said, I take care of right. six grandchildren too, and right. I get them in bed before I do this and supper ready and. So. <laughs> okay, great. And what was for supper? My husband Jody. Yeah. Uh, Jody Owen. I said, yeah, yeah. "Can you help me out? Are you going to show cue cards? Are you going to be?" <laughs> <He's> <laughs> like, yeah, I was trying to get him involved, but he's supports me and I'm thankful for that so oh great great what was for supper we had uh fettuccine alfredo for supper oh nice nice good good for you it was right, a little italian huh <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right well you have a good night Cheryl. Yep, you too. all right take care yep you too thanks again <laughs>